God is good. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're a mighty God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I have a, I have, I think I talked to this uh, last week a little bit, but uh, I have some laws of interpreting scripture. And when I was in Bible college, the greatest thing I learned in Bible college was how to, how to study the Bible. And so there's like several laws of interpreting scripture that they gave us in Bible college. But since then, I've, I've grown a lot since I got out of Bible college. And uh, most of what I know, I've not learned from Bible college. Most of what I know, I've learned from the Holy Ghost. And so there's several things the Lord has taught me about interpreting scripture okay. that are also part of these laws that I have of interpreting scripture. And there are nine laws that I have of interpreting scripture. And of these laws... Some of the most important ones are the ones the Lord has showed me. Like two of the most important ones. Now I have them down here on the table down here. You guys can get them after service. But one of the things, everything in the Bible is true. Everything in the Bible is 100% true. But everything in the Bible isn't true. Only the words of God in the Bible are the truth that sets us free. So we must rightly divide the word of truth. We may decide what is God's words and what are men's words in the Bible. And so we're able to do that through the, through the context of what, how it's written. Like some of the things Paul said, we know that some of the things Paul said were definitely scripture because Peter said so. He said that there was those who wanted to pervert the scriptures like the teachings of Paul's as they do the other scriptures. And so so some of the te but some of, even some of the, the teachings of Paul, he said himself, now this is not from the Lord. And so we know that some of the teachings of Paul is not scripture. And we know that some of the things that Job said was not scripture also, because to many of the things Job said, God got after him later on in the book of Job and reproved him for many of the things he was saying. So so those and then and then th here's another law of interpreting scripture is that all scripture must say must, must must be interpreted in light of all other scripture. In other words, it's all got to line up, or it's or it can't be considered scripture. There's a, there's some perverted things that have gotten into teachings in, in over the over the years. Some of it's because they've taken like, have you ever heard of the book of Enoch? Enoch was like a great man of God. He he was translated. He was not where God took him. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, he did not see death. And so I believe that's true. But he, there is a book of Enoch, and they didn't put it in the Bible. And there's reasons they didn't put it in, because there's lots of perverted things that men have added into the book of Enoch. As men later have added in a bunch of stuff. But, but, and a lot of that stuff is erroneous to the word of God. There's a bunch of stuff about giants being in the land, some 40, 50 feet tall. That's in the book of the book of Enoch, but the, and a lot of people have taken that and tried to put that into the Bible and try to fit that into the Word of God, but the Bible does not support that. That's the Bible right. says there was giants in the land, and that means like tall people. There's always been giants in the land, tall people, but there's never ever been like any 40, 50 foot tall people. That's never, right. it never has been. There's no record of it in, even in the, the even in the you know the, where they find dinosaur bones. There's no people that's 50 feet tall in the dinosaur bones. Mm -hmm. So in the fossil record, right. But, but the truth is, I mean, everything that God said is true. But we need to rightly divide the word of truth. Another, another one of these laws of interpreting scripture is this. That if God gives us a definition in the Bible, and God defines most of the words in the Bible that are really important to us. Most of the words or most of the phrases, God describes them in the Bible what they mean. And so if God gives us a definition, we should always use God's definition instead of man's definition. Now, I learned in Bible college that, that the ancient Greek language is a lost language. first thing they said in Greek class is the ancient Greek is a lost language. That's the first thing he told us. They said, we really don't understand what the words mean. And so I thought, well, I'm in this class. Well, the reason I was in that class was to learn that. And to learn that really what we have to do is we, now we have to, we do have like Strong's concordances and those are good. But what the Strong's has done is they went through all the different scriptures that word's used and they've seen the context it was used in and tried to figure out what that word meant. There's one word in the Bible, it's called agape. It's either translated love or charity. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it, it defines, God defines agape. 
It says agape is this, agape is that, agape is not this, agape is not that. It defines the word in that one chapter. There's other places where it defines words. And we always should use God's definition. Like the word repent, for instance. The first time the word repentance is used is in the book of Genesis. It said, and it repented the Lord that he had made man. So God said, I will destroy man whom I have created off the face of the earth. Now, why did they repent the Lord that he had made men? Because men had become so corrupt and so evil. They'd been so corrupt and so evil that, that it really repented the Lord. So he said, I will destroy man whom I have created. And it happened over 1,500 years. But back then, before the flood, people were living to be over 900 years old. And God said, I will, I will shorten the days of man's lives to about 120. And so since then, since after a few generations after that, like every couple of generations, lifespans dropped in until it got down to 70 to 80 years. About the last 3,500 years, lifespans have been about 70 to 80 years. How do I know that? Because Moses said, Moses lived about 3,500 years ago. And he said in one of the Psalms, he said, three score and seven to four score years, man's life is. And when, when Moses was 80 years old, that was four score, God called him to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. So he was basically at the top of where most people were living at that time. And God said, I'm calling you to ministry. Sometimes we think it's too late for us to do anything for God. It's not too late if God calls you. God will anoint yes. you. God will strengthen you. And God will give you the ability to do right. what he calls you That's to right. do. Don't ever think, God can't use me. God can use you. If you're breathing, God can use you. If you've got... If you've got a body, God can use you. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of y'all got bodies? <laughs> Amen. No, most of y'all don't have bodies, huh? <laughs> How many of y'all are breathing? <laughs> yes. Glory to God. Well, let's look, turn with me to Genesis. Praise you, Father. Genesis chapter 6. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just chapter 6, and we're going to start with verse 2. Tell me when you get there. All right, I'm not there yet. <laughs> and the sons of God, say the sons of God. Sons of God. And the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is flesh. And his, and his days shall be 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, Mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Now, it is taught by many people that these sons of God were fallen angels. And the rear they got that is out of the book of Enoch I talked to you about earlier. They get that out of the book of Enoch that there was these angels and they were fallen angels. And the thing is, God defines the sons of God in the Bible. So shouldn't we use God's definition of who the sons of God is? Amen. We should use God. Now, where they get that is from... Job chapter 1 where it says and the sons of God came unto God came unto God before the throne of God and it says and Satan came with them that doesn't mean Satan was the son of God he just came with them and it says in Revelation that Satan is the accuser of the brethren who accuses God before his throne day and night it says that in the book of Revelation so, so but we overcame them we overcome him by the word of God and by faith in that word by the blood of the lamb and faith in that word, in his blood. And the word of our testimony. And so it says, The sons of God came unto the daughters of men and took them all that they would, would as their wives. All right? And now if this was fallen angels, now what they teach is these fallen angels had sex with all these earthly women. women and, they, and that's where the giants came from. The word translated giants is Nephilim, is the Hebrew word. And it comes from three, it actually comes from three root words, and it means tyrants, bullies, and abortionists. The three root words these come. So they're evidently tyrants, bullies, and abortionists before the flood. Abortionists, ones who abort kids. Mm -hmm. 
So the earth became evil, kind of like it is today. Yes. Jesus says in the days of Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus is coming soon. Yes, he yeah. is. Jesus is coming soon. So if the Bible defines who the sons of God is, where is that found? Turn with me to Romans chapter 8. It defines who the sons of God is in Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. We'll start with verse 12. We're going to go through verse 17. Therefore, brethren, this is the Apostle Paul speaking under inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Now, is that talking about physical death or spiritual death? Well, we're all going to die physically, right? We're all going to, it's the point once in a man to die, and then the judgment, we're all going to die physically. But this is talking about spiritual death, separation from God. If you walk after the flesh, you will die. You will be separated from God. But, I love those buts in the Word of God. Tom did a message about that, but, right, Tom? Yeah. But, if you through the Spirit, say through the Spirit, through the Spirit, do mortify, the word mortify means put to death, the deeds of the body, you shall live. Hallelujah. So I want to live. I want to live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, those are the sons of God. So there God defines who the sons of God are. Yes. Those who are led by the Spirit of God. So they are men. Yes. Sons of God are not angels. Now, now if there's angels, if there's angels that do are being led by the Spirit of God then they would also be considered sons of God. However, fallen angels could never be considered sons of God. That's right. The devil, Satan himself couldn't be called the son of God because, because he's, fall, he's fallen from God's grace. He's turned his back on God. He's been cast down. He's the deceiver of the, of the brethren. He, he's out there to kill, steal, and destroy us who are the heirs of salvation. The angel of the Lord, they're, they're encamped round about us to deliver us and to set us free and to help us. They're there to minister for us. They're there to help us. The word minister means to help. I'm a minister. I'm a servant yes. of God because I'm a minister of God. I've been called to help people. Hallelujah. I'm in the ministry. Thank you, Lord. I'm a servant. Thank you, Lord. I, had, I was at a deal one time, and, and uh, one of my rel relatives I went and got something for him, and he said, well, thank you. And I said, well, I said I'm just here to serve. And she was shocked that I said that. So I, I didn't hear that about you. I didn't, haven't seen her much over the years. And I said, really? And I said, who, 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 who told you that? Well, I, I'm not going to say, she said. But, <laughs> but anyhow, we are here to serve. I'm as a child of God. I'm a servant of God. One time, pa Paul and Silas, they were out preaching. And there was this woman of divination. She was, had a spirit of divination. And she was going around behind them saying, these are servants of the Most High God. They come to preach the salvation of the Lord. And she was mocking them the whole day. She followed them like three days. Finally, Paul got tired of it. And the Holy Spirit you know, quickened him in his spirit to do this. He turned around. He said, I adjure you in the name of Jesus. Come out of her. And immediately the devil left him. Immediately. And then her masters couldn't make any money from her because she was a slave and these guys made a living from her, from this spirit of divination that was in her. There are spirits, evil spirits, that they do have miraculous power, but nothing like the power of God. They have nothing like the power of God. Amen. Demons don't heal people. That's right. Demons don't heal people. Je the Bible says Jesus of Nazareth, who God anointed with the Holy Ghost of power, who went about doing good, healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. The devil oppresses people. The devil makes you sick. The devil tries to oppress you. Tries Many times when Jesus healed people, he would cast a demon of infirmity out of them. And a demon of infirmity. Because demons bring infirmity. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So in the light of this, if we go back to Genesis, and we see the sons of God looked upon the daughters of men, 
And they took, they took of them of as many as they were of their wife, as their wives. It says as their wives, right? Yes. Now, what way this is taught is that they, they, the descendants of these people, that they, that they produced these giants, and God destroyed the earth because of that. But God, it, it doesn't say that in the Bible. No. It doesn't say that even they produced it. It says, and after the, there was giants, it said after that, the, God, the sons of God looked upon the daughters of men. And they bear children of them. And then in verse 5 it says, And God saw the wickedness, say wickedness, wickedness, of man was great in the earth. And every imagination of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. You see, what happened is the men that were following God, the line of Seth, were the men, they were the sons of God. Because they were following God. It says so in, let's look over there where it says so. Hallelujah. It's a few chapters back. Where are we going? Uh, chapter 4. And this is after Cain and Abel. You know, Adam and Eve had Cain and Abel. Cain killed Abel. Abel was a righteous, was a righteous man. And again, Cain killed the righteous one and Cain went off. And he started, you know, he did evil in the sight of the Lord. And God said, you know, sin's at the door and it's, 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 it's there to kill you. And then here is they decided they had, you know, back then, they, Adam and Eve lived over 900 years, right? Think how many children you can have in 900 years. <laughs> Ladies? Oh, no. <laughs> now, now, also think about this. God, had, God commanded them to be fruitful and, and multiply and to fill the earth, all right? They probably just didn't have one baby at a time before the flood. They're talking about two or three at a time, probably. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> now we once in a while they'll have two or three. Didn't mm -hmm. And Adam knew his wife again, this is verse 25. And she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God said, She hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel. In other words, Abel was the righteous son, and now Seth was a new righteous son, whom Cain slew. And to Seth, to him also were born a son, his name was called Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. And so what happened is this line of Seth who were calling upon the name of the Lord, they began to intermarry with these other, these other women that were worldly women. They were ungodly women. That's why God has forbidden all through the word of God to intermarry with certain, certain people that they, they, they worship other gods. Why? Because they will pull your heart away from God. Yes. So God commands us to abstain from that. God commands us to do that. Why? Because they will pull your heart away from God. My mother, my mother thought my dad was a Christian when she married him, but she found out he wasn't after she got been married to him for a while. And he pulled her away from God. Isn't that right, Mom? And she she told me he would like go do stuff that she didn't want him doing. And so she said, Well, I don't want you doing that. And he said, If you don't like it, come with me. So she started going with him. And he pulled her down to his level in a lot of ways. And finally, one, the day came where, where she realized that she would die, she would go to hell. And she came back to the Lord. Yes. That was a good day, wasn't it? Amen. Thank you. I remember that day. But she called, she said she called out to God. She said, Lord, if you'll have me back, I'll live the rest of my life for you. And you know, God, anytime we turn our heart to God, He'll have us back. Yes. You never went too far that God won't have you back. Amen. If you have a heart for God, if you want to receive God, if you want to walk with God, God's will is that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. Don't ever think you can't turn back to God. If you have a heart to come back to God, Jesus said, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Shall Amen. be filled. Amen. Hallelujah. And God will find a way to, to, if a person is really hungry for God, if they really want to be delivered, if they really want to be set free, God has a way that he'll help you get back. Amen. And he'll enable you by his power 
to break the bondages in your life by his power, by his might. Yes. Mom deli God delivered my mother from all kinds of things. Yes. He broke the power of cigarettes in her life. Yes. Just like that, didn't he? He broke them. She loved to tell dirty jokes before that. Isn't that what you told me? And now, and ever since God broke the power of that in her life, she said, God, please take away that. It was in her flesh. God will crucify the power of things in our flesh Thank if we'll you. just surrender yes. to God. Amen. If we'll just give our life to God yes. and surrender completely to Him. There's a book by some guy, it's called Total Surrender. He wrote it in the 1890s. And really, what he says in this book, he says you have to sell out to God. Now, I just read this the last few months. But it says you really have to sell out to God. And he had it right. You have to sell out to God. Yes. And truly make him Lord of your life. Amen. We've got to sell out to God, folks. Yes, Lord. We've got to be willing to do what God Glory. says. Glory to God. And if we do that, he'll enable us to do what's right. Yes, he does. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. So what happened is the sons of God looked upon the daughters of men and saw they were fair, and they took of them wives all which they chose. Say wives. wives. Say wives. wives. Now Jesus said angels don't get married. All right? Jesus said that. So these couldn't be angels. Another, word, another thing is that everything in, in Genesis said, and everything produced after its own kind. In other words, there was no like half-breeds. There's like a few animal species that are half-breeds. Like you take a horse and mix it with like a, a donkey, they make a mule. But mules can't reproduce. Every half-breed that, 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 that's made in, in, in nature, every half-breed, are in the same kind. But even their offspring can't produce. They're in the same kind. Everything produces after notice. Angels and people don't mix. That would be an abomination to God. Angels and people don't mix. Everything produces after its own kind. Hallelujah. Now that's in Matthew chapter 22 where these people came to Jesus. And they said, and what happened is, we'll read that. Look with me over to Matthew chapter 22. We'll start with verse 23. Thank you, Lord. God's word is just good, isn't it? Amen. I just love it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Now, this is Jesus talking about Jesus. And there was like two different sects, you know, like different religions. When I say sects, I'm talking about religious like denominations. Like the ruling parties in, in, the, in the religion. Back then there were the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now, the Pharisees believed in the resurrection of the dead, but the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection of the dead. And so they had this little parable thing that they would tell people, and they'd try to prove their point. And so they came to Jesus, and the same day came unto him Sadducees, which said, There is no resurrection, and asked him, saying, Master, Moses said, If a man die, having no children, his, his brother shall marry his wife, and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were, there, there were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, say married, Mary. Deceased and having no issue, in other words, he didn't have a, a, a descendant, he left his wife unto his brother. And likewise, the second also, and then the third, even unto the seventh. In other words, there were seven brothers, and every one of them had the same wife. And the last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seventh? For they all had her. And then Jesus answered unto them, said, You do err, not knowing the scriptures. He said, You don't really understand the scripture. Now these were religious leaders. They're like the Pope. <laughs> yeah. They're religious leaders. And Jesus has said, You don't understand the scriptures. Mm -hmm. See, even people who think they're the mighty religious leaders 
they don't understand some things, all right? If they don't understand the scriptures, they're ignorant of the things of God. And so Jesus answered, said, you do not know the scriptures nor the power of God. For in the resurrection, neither Mary, they are neither Mary or are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in him. In other words, he said, angels don't get married. That's right. So these sons of God couldn't have been angels. Because it says they got married. That's right. It says they took as many as they wanted as their wives. That's right. So what happened? What happened? Let's look, look with me over to uh, look with me over to Genesis. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter uh, 19. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We're going to get there. Genesis chapter 19. We're going to start with verse 31. Thank you, Father. Okay, before we get to this, uh, God sent angels to, to Abraham. And the angel of the Lord told Abraham, he said, I'm going, we're going to go down to Sodom and Gomorrah. We're going to wipe them off the face of the earth for their evil in the sight of God. And so Abraham started interceding for the cities. And he went down to, if there's so many righteous people, wouldn't you spare it for those righteous people? He went all the way down to 10 in these two great cities. That means large. They had a lot of people in it. It said Nineveh was a great city. It had 120,000. It doesn't tell us how many that Sodom and Gomorrah had, but there were lots. He said, if, how about 10? If you get down to, to 10 righteous people, won't you spare the cities for the 10 righteous? And God said, yes, I would. That's why Jesus, that's why God can't pour out his wrath in the earth until the church gets pulled out of here. That's right. Because there's a lot more than 10 righteous people in the earth. Mm -hmm. A lot more. A lot more. Amen. There's more than 10 righteous people in this church. Praise God. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. And so God, God said, I would spare the cities even for them. But, but when he went down to the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, into Sodom, the angels did. It said all the men of the city wanted to have sex with those angels. They were beaten on Lot's door. And the angels had to strike them blind and took them out of there. After they got out of there, God started pouring out fire from heaven. Mm -hmm. And then they went into another city. They said, why don't we spare that one so we can go into that? Because Lot didn't want his wife, his, his good daughters, not to be able to have husbands. And so, so then after they saw how evil that city was, they went ahead and went out up into a mountain. And so they're up into this mountain. And his daughters realized, well, there's no men to, to, for we need us to have husbands from. And so the firstborn said to the younger, our husband is old, our father is old. How old are you? I got sweat on my glasses. The firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth. In other words, they said, We're here all alone with our father, and there's nobody here to help us to have a son, to have us descendants. And, and you know, they want to have descendants of their father. And so, so they devised this plan amongst the two of them. They said, Come, let us make our father drink wine. Let's get our father drunk. And we will lie with him that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drunk with wine that night. And the firstborn went in and laid with her father. And he, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. In other words, he was so drunk, he didn't know what was going on. But she became pregnant from her father. And it came to pass on the morrow or the next day that the firstborn said to the younger, Behold, I laid yesterday, yesterday night with my father. Let us make him drink wine again this night also. And you go in and lie with him that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine again that night also. And the younger arose and laid with him. And she perceived not when she laid down nor when she arose. Thus were both the daughters of, of Lot with child by their father. Now that's evil, folks. Yes, it is. That's evil. All right. And the firstborn bare a son and named his name Moab. The same as the father of the Moabites. When this was written, the same as the father of the Moabites. Now Moses wrote Genesis. I mean, God, God gave it to him. He wrote it. And the younger, she also bare a son. And his name was Benjamin. The same as the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. And so the Moabites and the, and the Ammonites and the children of Ammon, 
They were the descendants of they were the descendants of these two daughters of Lot who got him drunk. Now let's look over to uh, let's look over to uh, 1 Kings chapter 11 we're going to start with verse 1. 1 Kings chapter 11 verse 1. Y'all getting anything out of this? Amen. Thank you, Lord. 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 1. Now this is talking about Solomon. Solomon when he got old. Now the Bible, in the Old Testament, an elder was somebody who was over 50. How many of you all are elders here? Yeah. I am. We've got a lot of elders here, right? How many over 50? That's an elder. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm definitely, I'm going to raise both hands because I'm well over 50. <laughs> but it says when, when, when Solomon got old, but Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughters of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, say Moabites. Moabites. Now we just read that the Moabites were the descendants of this one child that was born in sin, right? Yes. Women of the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Edomites, the Zidians, the Hittites, of the nations concerning that which the Lord said unto the children of Israel. Now God had warned thee, the children of Israel, ye shall not go in unto them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your hearts after their gods. So God has always, has always done this. Now he says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. He tells us now, don't be yoked up with unbelievers. That's right. That means don't intermarry. If you're living for God, don't intermarry with somebody who's not living for God. That's right. Why? Because they'll end up turning you away from God. Because the two shall be one flesh. You join yourself to someone who's not living for God. You become one flesh with him or her. That's, right. That's why the word says that. Because they know. I mean, we, lo we love her. I love you, Kathy. I love my wife. We should love our wives. We should love our husbands. Amen. But we should not be joined as people who are not really living like we're living. If we're living for God. We, we don't do that. The Word says that. It says they'll pull you into their ways, to their evil ways. You shall not go into to them. But Solomon clave unto these in love. You see, he loved them. People say, I love her. I love her. I love her. And that's what he was. He loved them. And he had 700 wives. That's a lot. That is. You know, the Bible says, he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, right? Solomon had 700 wives. And that wasn't enough. He said he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, as over 50, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect before the Lord his God, as was the heart of his David his father. And Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord as did David his father. Then did Solomon build high places for Chemoth, the abomination of Moab, and the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And the children of Ammon was one of those that, that became the descendants yes. that we just read about of Lot's daughters yes. who sinned Sin brings shame. Yes. Sin brings shame. Sin brings shame and brings abominations. We need to follow God, folks. Yes, we do. We live in a time, and we're really in the last days. We live in a time where we need to make sure we're living for God. Amen. Because Jesus is really coming soon. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 24. Now, now, John Hagee says that Matthew chapter 24 is the key, is the backbone, it's the spine of, of end-time prophecy. 
And, and the Lord showed me this a long time ago, that really this one chapter in the Bible, it really fulfills much of what the end time stuff is about. That's what we're like we're living right now. Say so we're living in the end time. We're living in the end time. Now turn me to Matthew chapter 24. Now at the first, in the first first couple, got verses two or three, his disciples came and did, he said, please show us the signs of when the end of the age will be, the end of the world will be, which is the age. The age will be, and what will be the signs of thy coming? Now, Jesus began to tell them, now we know the end of the age is the return of Christ. We know that. I mean, it teaches it all through the Bible. The Bible says the day that Christ will rise first, and those of us who are alive and remain will be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord and will be with him forever. That's the rapture. And then Revelation chapter 4, verse Chapter 4, verse 1, it says, And I heard as it was a great sound of trumpets with the voice of these angels. And he says, Come up hither. And that was right after he talked about the churches. And then from that point on in Revelation, he's dealing with the nation of Israel. But he dealt with the churches in chapter 2 and chapter 3. So what happened to the churches? They, they got raptured out of here. Right before the great tribulation. Mm -hmm. Which that's getting ready to happen, folks. Amen. That's getting ready to happen. Thank you, Lord. The Lord spoke to me in... in uh, August of August of 2001. And he told me there was, he said in about six years, there's going to be a great, there's going to be a great uh, economic crisis. And it's, he said it's going to be worldwide. And it started, actually, it started in July of 2007 when the, when the economy crashed with the housing economy, when the housing economy crashed. And, and then at the end of the next month, at the end of August, the Lord told me to tell our people here that, that if we had money in the stock market, to take it out in cash positions. And so I shared that with, with you all. Some of you that's been here that long remember that. But about six weeks later, the stock market started crashing after that. And then it went, it went down so bad. I mean, we had people, we had, we had, I mean, a lot of stocks, they went down so bad. But now... The stock market's come back up some, but what they did is they kind of propped up the stock market somewhat because what they did, all those stocks that went bad, they took them all off the Dow Jones. And they put in companies that were up and coming to strengthen the, the stock market. And so it makes it look like it's better now, that, but a lot of the stocks are still down. And we still have companies failing today. But here, here uh, Matthew chapter 24. So G Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, I think it's verse 14. But he said, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness unto every nation, and then shall the end come. The end is the end of the age. That's the rapture of the church. And then he begins to deal with the nation of Israel immediately after that. But then, later on in that chapter, after he got through the tribulation, he said, This great tribulation that likes never been before, never shall be. It says in Revelation to the church, to the churches, he said, If you'll be faithful unto the end, he said, if you'll overcome, I'll make you that you should not go through the hour of temptation, the time period of temp tribulation, temptation of tribulation, that shall come upon the whole earth. He said, I'll make it that you should not do that. So Jesus said, we not have to do that. Now then in Matthew, now we went through all that, and he told about he's coming back with his angel, with his saints, to rule and reign. And then, then it kind of switches gear in chapter, in verse 37. And what he's beginning to tell about the rapture of the church then in verse 37. 24, 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You see, there's a coming for the saints. That's the rapture. Then there's a coming with the saints. Yes. That's when he comes to set up his kingdom after the tribulation period. I want to go before. I want to go before the tribulation period. How about you? Amen. Because we've been studying about that in the Bible study we go to on Friday nights. We've been studying about the tribulation, and it's really bad. It really is bad. I mean, it's bad stuff. The wrath of God's going to be poured out in the earth. It's going to be worse than it's ever been before in history, or ever shall be. Amen. The tribulation. I don't want to go through that. How about you? Jesus begins to teach in Matthew 24 here, verse 37. But as in the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You see, just like God, he also, he also relates it like to Sodom and Gomorrah. If there were any righteous, if there were plenty righteous, God would spare the cities. God wouldn't pour out his wrath. 
But we know even in the tribulation period, there will be 144,000 of the Jewish people that will come to their senses and come to God. And he'll use those to preach until he pulls them out. And then, then he's going to send an angel in to preach. Because there will be nobody else to preach. And he's going to send an angel. Because it's God's will that none should perish, but that all should come to repent. God wants to give everybody a chance to come to him. Amen. Why? Because he's merciful. Because he's gracious. Because he's mighty. Because he loves us. We are his children. Yes. So I'm a child of God. I am a child of God. Hallelujah. For as in the days of Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus, when he comes and raptures us out of here, then all hell is going to break loose in the earth. You know why? Because we are the only thing that's holding Satan back. Because we have authority. You say, I'm a child of God. I am a child of God. I have authority, I have authority. over all over all. the miraculous power miraculous of, the of the devil. He shall by no means hurt me. He shall by no means hurt me. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm, the I'm above and not below. Above and not below. Everything I put my hand Everything to, my hand prosper. prosper. And is blessed. blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Satan is under my feet. Satan's under my He's feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Glory to God. Glory Thank to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. And knew not till the flood came, so shall coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall be two in the field. One shall be taken, the other left. Two shall be in grinding at the mill, but one shall be taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Jesus, now this is Jesus talking, right? Amen. He said we need to be watching. We need to be expecting. In the early church, they actually was expecting Jesus to come back. Part of the reason was one of the, because as he told his disciples, he said there's some, some here, and actually in the Greek it says someone, here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his glory. And who, you know who that was? That was the Apostle John. Because on the island of Patmos, after they, after they couldn't boil him in oil, he, they couldn't kill him. They tried to boil him in oil, and they couldn't kill him. So they put him on a, a prison island, the island of Patmos. And on the island of Patmos, the great revelation that we see in the book of Revelations yes. came to John, the, the apostle John. And he wrote it down, and we have it in the Bible today. And he tells about Jesus coming back. He saw Jesus coming back in his glory and set in his kingdom here on the yes, earth. Yes, thank you. He Lord. saw that. Glory. So when Jesus said there'd be yes. some here, there was someone. And that someone was John. Yes. The Apostle John. John had such a you know, John had such a great relationship with Jesus. You know, he said when he talked about himself, he always talked about the apostle that Jesus loved. We need to have that kind of relationship with Jesus that we know that Jesus loves us so much. Yes. You see, he just knew that Jesus loved him. That's why he talked about himself, the apostle that Jesus loved. Yes. Everybody thinks, well, Jesus loved John more than he loved him. No, Jesus right. didn't love John more than he loves anybody. That's right. He loves us all the same. Amen. You know, God can do that. We, we have children. We like one children more than other children. And we may love one children more. Maybe not, but we, some, you know, some people do. But God's not like that. He loves us all just the same. You know, God weeps as much when someone God dies and go to hell. Even because He loves all His children, all His people. God wants everybody to turn away from their sins and turn to God. Yes. God wants everybody to be saved, to be delivered, yes. to be set free. It's not yes. God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. Thank you. God wants you saved. God wants you to live. God wants you to live in heaven with Him forever. He wants all His children, all His people, to live in yes. heaven with Him forever. Thank you, Lord. He wants that. That's His desire. That's His will. But but His will is not going to happen like that because Jesus said there will be many who will not follow God. He said narrow is the narrow is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to eternal life and few there be that find it. But wide is the way. And why does the path that leads to destruction and many there be that find that? There's, there's way more people going to make go to make it to hell than going to make it to heaven. 
because they're following the devil. Now, they don't know they're following the devil. Most of them are, are the devil worshippers. There's some of them that are devil worshippers. When I was a chaplain's assistant in the Army, I had one guy come in. When he looked like the devil when he came to my office, they all had to go through through me, you know, when they checked in. And this one guy come in to check in through the through the chaplain's office. And he came in, I could see that, I mean, I could see the devil in it. And I began, I, I said, let me tell you about our religious program. He said, you don't tell me about your religious program. He said, I serve Satan. And I could see he did. He was demon upset. I knew that by the Spirit. But, but there are people that do serve Satan, and they know it. There's other people who don't know it. They don't even know Satan's around. But they're serving him anyhow, because he is the God of this world. And if you don't serve God, if you don't serve Jesus Christ, you are serving Satan. That's right. If you don't serve Jesus Christ, you are serving Satan. And you're right in the palm of his hand. And he twists you and he uses you. But we need to turn our lives to God. We need to be ready when Jesus comes back. And he's coming back any time. I can't tell you the day or the hour. We don't know that. But we know from the signs that he's coming soon. Yes. We know from the signs the end is near. Anyhow, one of the things the Lord told me when he wrote that great economic collapse that we're in the middle of right now, he said, it's going to set the stage for the Antichrist to take over. It's going to set the stage, he said. Yes. And it's, that's why it's dragging on so long, folks. We're, it's still in it. It's still going. It's still hard to get jobs out there. It's not like you're looking at the paper and there's so many jobs. I mean, it's hard to get jobs. Especially good jobs. I talked to a lady the other day. She said where she works, they've cut their hours way down. I think she works at like Walmart or something. She said they cut their hours way down so they don't have to pay them insurance. Because under Obamacare, you have to pay insurance if you're close to a full-time employee. And so, so instead of trying to help people, it's actually hurt people in this kind of thing. You see what I'm saying? Because they, they, they just want to hold back instead of do, do right. God's good. God wants to help you. God wants to strengthen you. God wants to bless you. Yes, he does. He's a mighty God. Yes, he, he is. is. Ted, we're going to pray for you. Just just wait just a second. I want to lift up Ted. We just want to lift up Ted because he's having trouble with his, his van. His transmission went out right. And we're going to lift him up in that. Father God, we just lift yes, up Ted Lord. right now yes, in the name Lord. of Jesus. Father, strengthen him, Father. Help him, Father, to yes, keep his eyes on you. you. And we give you praise and glory. We thank you, Lord, that in the middle of this situation, you're going to show yourself mighty. And we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank glory you, Lord. to God. Thank glory you, Lord. To God. He's Hallelujah. mighty God. God is good. Yes. God is good. Glory Look to God. what the Lord has done. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time.